after that amazing welcome to worship musically, it seems kind of pointless for me to welcome you to worship, but nonetheless, it is my job. Welcome to worship. We are so glad that you've chosen to be with us on this wonderful Mother's Day weekend and that you are here as we come this Sunday to dedicate children to God. We come, each one of us, from our own separate places, dedicating our own lives to God every Sunday in this place. And so if you happen to be a guest with us, we would like to offer you our special welcome and would ask that you would take just a moment during the service to fill out a guest card that's in the pew rack in front of you and drop that in the offering plate later in the service. Let that be your offering to us today so that we might learn a little bit more about you and get to know you better throughout the week. It is our desire to come into this house every single week because we know that the experience of corporate worship has the power to change our lives. And so as we begin worship this morning, will you join me in our litany printed in your order of service? Come, let us worship and praise God. The Lord is our shepherd, our guardian, and our God. We give thanks for the many ways God cares for us. Three pastors and still waters fed us and comfort us. Even though difficulties happen in our lives, God is still with us. Even when it seems that the world has nothing to offer but suffering and pain, God surrounds us with love and blessings. Surely God's mercy accompanies us on our journey. And we will dwell in God's house forever. Welcome to worship.
Mother's Day is always such a very special day in the life of our church. In addition to honoring all mothers, we hold the tradition of honoring our newest mothers and fathers in a very special way. Traditionally, Baptists believe in believer's baptism, meaning one day the individual will make their own choice to become a Christian. But, but until that day comes, we invite our families to participate in baby dedication, a Christian ceremony that dedicates the child to God and welcomes the baby into this church. And in addition to dedicating their child to God, the parents also dedicate themselves to raising the child as a Christian. At this time, Matt will come and introduce the families who come today to dedicate their child. Thank you, Katie. It's a real privilege on Mother's Day to have a chance to introduce families and new children to our congregation. Uh, Matthew and Molly Cawthon come uh, to introduce and to dedicate William Thomas Cawthon, uh, along with brothers uh, Sam and Charlie. Uh, Matthew and Molly have dedicated all three of their children here in this congregation, and they have been faithful to raise their children uh, in the fellowship of this church and to allow us to partner with them in helping to raise their children uh, inside the love of Jesus Christ. And we are very grateful for the privilege of being able to share with you in raising these children inside this church. Um, thank you very much uh, and welcome. Ann Wright Dorothy Millen is one day shy of one year old. Is that right? She turns one tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maggie and Bill bring Aunt Pike to be dedicated this morning. Uh, Maggie's grandparents are here somewhere. Bill, are your parents here? All, both, all the grandparents are back there as well. As I told the Coffins, it is a real privilege uh, and a real honor. You put a lot of trust in us as a congregation when you choose to allow us to partner with you in raising your child. And we don't take that privilege or that honor lightly. Uh, it's wonderful to welcome you and to welcome Ann Wright to worship this morning. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Trina and Brandon Rest Press are here. Uh, both of them have taught Sunday school recently, by the way. They're Sunday school teachers in our church. But before I introduce their children, the thing that's most important about Brandon is he is Coach Brandon. Uh, Thad is four years old. My son, Hudson, we're on, they're on the same t-ball team. We're on the 4U t-ball team together. And Brandon is our, is our coach. 4U t-ball plays baseball by a little different set of rules. There are no outs. Don't keep score. Uh, but Brandon and I have decided that so far our team is undefeated. <laughs> Thanks to Brandon's uh, great coaching. Charlotte Renee is here. Charlotte. <laughs> Welcome. We're glad you're here. Guys, thank you for trusting us as a congregation to partner with you in raising Charlotte and Thad both. We're grateful to have you in this here this morning. Warren and Eileen Walls are here with uh, Will and then with Lillian Grace Walls. Uh, these are parents, both of whom grew up in this church and are now raising their own family in this church. Um, they know what it means to partner with this congregation to raise a family. And they're choosing to do it again. That's a credit to you guys. Um, we're grateful to welcome each of you this morning, especially you, Lily and Grace. Well, this is the Yancey family. The Yanceys have dedicated all three of their children in the last few years on Mother's Day. Today, they bring Patrick Henry Yancey V, uh, Mary Caroline and Patrick Yancey, along with Lawton and Louise, uh, the Yancey family has been in this congregation for generations, uh, all the way back to the very beginning of our church. Patrick and Mary Caroline, it really is a privilege to partner with your in raising your children at Central Baptist Church. We thank you for trusting your with us, our responsibility. We do not take lightly at all. As we introduce these families, there is a role for all of us to play in dedicating them into this church this morning. I would call all of your attentions to our litany of dedication printed inside your worship guide. Uh, congregation, please participate where appropriate. Parents, please participate where appropriate. We welcome these children brought by their parents into the love and care of our congregation. We rejoice in their lives 
and we take responsibility for them. We receive them as gifts from God. We share in dedicating them to God. And we commit to caring for them with God. Parents, we share in your joy over these beautiful children. We also acknowledge the responsibility you have as Christian parents. To you, the congregation of faith, I commend these children to your love and care as you endeavor to live before these children the life of faith. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that these children may be surrounded by steadfast love and faith and strengthened in the way that leads to Christian maturity and life. Having heard these promises, we do joyfully commend these children to the divine care and protection of God for all the years of their lives. May the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon these children. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask for your blessing over this day of new beginnings. These are your children, Lord, each one wonderfully made and dearly loved by you, by their parents, and by their church family. Surround each of them, Lord, with your wisdom and grace. Teach them to live life with a faithful heart that desires you. We celebrate with their devoted parents and pray your Holy Spirit will fill them with an abundance of love, patience, kindness, and wisdom as they raise their child to be your faithful servant. We praise you for each one of these beautiful children, for your protection over them, and for your unending grace. In your holy and precious name we pray, amen. You can come and join us. Can, can, do you think I can sit right here and y'all can turn around and face me? How about that? All right. Good morning. I told the kids downstairs, happy Mother's Day, and they got confused because they're, they're not mothers. <laughs> I said, did you give your mother a happy Mother's Day? And... Joey said, I did, as soon as I got out of bed. <laughs> so, good job, Joey. 
Today we're going to talk about listening. It's the perfect thing to talk about on Mother's Day. I know that sometimes we really listen out for certain things, and sometimes we tune certain things out. Raise your hand if you know the sound of an ice cream truck. You know it right off the bat, don't you? What about, raise your hand if you know the theme song to your very favorite TV show. Yep, you could be in the other room and you said, oh, gotta go watch that. What about your mother's voice? If you're in the living room and you hear two people talking in the kitchen, do you know which one is your mom when she's talking? Yeah, because you know your mother's voice. I do that sometimes here at church. I can be in my office and people congregate in the hall and sometimes I say, oh, I know who's out there talking because I can recognize a lot of our congregation's voice without even seeing who they are because we all have very unique voices. Mm -hmm. So this is sometimes we don't even have to be looking at anything or seeing something to know what the sound is, right? So I have the, this basket, and you have, you have to listen very, very carefully, but I'm going to reach my hand in here, and I'm going to make some noise, and I want you to see if you can recognize the sound without even knowing what it is. You ready? Stapler. Stapler. A stapler. You got it. What about this? Bell. A bell. All right, this one's a tricky one. Ready? Okay, you can't see in there, can you? are not cheap, are you? Good job. So you can recognize things even when you can't hear it, right? In our story today, Jesus talks about recognizing his voice, okay? And he tells us that several times throughout the Bible that he is a good shepherd and he takes care of his sheep. And that if you are a true follower of his, one of his sheep, that you could recognize his voice. But how does that work for us? Can we hear Jesus' actual voice right now? No. no, but where can we hear Jesus' voice when we read it? In the Bible, it even says when Jesus actually says something, right? And have we read that a lot of times, right? We read over and over again, Jesus said, Jesus said, right? So we've studied what Jesus said in the Bible. We've become his followers, and did he say that he would take care of our, his sheep? His followers? Yep. And if we're truly his sheep, then we would know his voice. Okay? So it might not be his actual voice, but even though we can't see Jesus, we've studied his word and we've done what Jesus says so much that we recognize what he wants us to do. Right? So as we go through this, oh, another thing I told the early service, and we're going to talk about this in a couple weeks, but we know when Jesus goes back to heaven, Jesus sends the Holy Spirit, right? Is the Holy Spirit in all of us? Yes. So is God in all of us? Yes. So can I recognize Jesus in Leah? Yeah. If she's doing what Jesus says and acting like Jesus, I can recognize Jesus' voice in her. Can I recognize Jesus' voice in Hudson? Yes. yes, because Jesus is in us. So if we're doing what Jesus wants us to do because we've learned that and studied it, we can recognize Jesus' voice within each other because the Holy Spirit is in all of us. So this week I want you to be looking out for Jesus' voice in everything you do. Try to hear what Jesus is telling you to, to do. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the Bible and its truth. Thank you for teaching us who to follow. Help us to recognize your voice and do what you ask. Help us to follow you more closely. In his name we pray. Amen.
Mother's Day, let me call your attention to the Georgia Baptist Children's Home insert inside your worship folder. Every year on Mother's Day at Central, we collect a special offering for the Children's Home. This offering that we collect today, combined with our regular annual budgeted giving to the Children's Home, and combined in addition to those two offerings with an annual distribution from our missions endowment, allow us to be appropriately a strong supporter every year of the work of the Georgia Baptist Children's Home. Uh, you can contribute to the Georgia Baptist Children's Home today by placing a check in the offering plate, clearly marked uh, for the Georgia Baptist Children's Home, by making a contribution later this week through our church office, or by contributing directly to the Children's Home by following the website on the bottom of your insert, georgiachildren.org. On Mother's Day, we remember that God has a preferential concern for the vulnerable, particularly for vulnerable children. So we encourage you to give as generously as you are able. Ushers, I invite you forward now for our offertory prayer. And please join me now in prayer. Loving and gracious God, as we bring our tithes and offerings to you, we offer ourselves as well as living testimonies to your guiding presence in our lives. Take all that we have and all that we are and bless it to your service in this church, in this community, and all over the world. This morning, we're especially mindful of our opportunity to support the important work of the Georgia Baptist Children's Home. Use our partnership with them and our shared partnership with you to bring to reality our hope and prayer that all children everywhere would find safe and loving homes. Use our gifts this morning to shape us and make us zealous in our efforts to care for those in need. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I speak to my sheep. They hear me. They listen to my voice. They know my voice, Jesus says. So if we are the sheep, what is it like to hear the voice of the shepherd? What is it like to hear the voice of God? What is what does God's voice sound like? The voice of the one who created the entire universe. What does that sound like? We don't know exactly how big the universe is that God created. But right now, all of the universe that we've been able to discover and see and measure, scientists say, the observable universe right now is 93 billion light years across. 93 billion light years in diameter. And the observable universe, by the way, is almost certain to grow larger as this new Webb telescope gets deployed out into space. But right now, scientists estimate that the universe has a diameter of 93 billion light years with more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on the Earth. More stars up there in the sky than there are grains of sand on all the oceans and all the deserts in all the world. As many, they say, as 10,000 stars per grain of sand, if you can even begin to try to imagine that. Just to put all of this into perspective, or at least to try to, the sun, the closest star to where we are right now. One, one light second is 186,000 miles. Light travels 186,000 miles per second. And the sun, the closest star to us, is eight light minutes away. So to get to one light hour, eight light minutes, to get to one light hour, you'd have to be about seven and a half times farther from where, farther beyond the sun. Seven and a half times beyond the sun to get to one light hour. One light day, 180 times as far away from us as the sun is. One light year, 65,000 times farther away from us than where the sun is now. That's a long, long way away. The sun is 94 million miles away. So that's 94 million miles times 65,000 one light year. And the entire universe from one end to to the other, at least all that we can see now, is 93 billion of those across. 93 billion. And the first way we learn who God is in Scripture is as the one who created it all. <laughs> in the beginning, God created. This is my Father's world, right? <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, all 93 billion light years of it. What must the voice of that God sound like? The sheep, they know the sound of my voice, Jesus says. What must that God sound like? James Earl Jones, right? Big, booming, resonant voice that shakes you from the inside out. Every human voice is unique. Katie touched on this with our children in the children's sermon. No, no two are the same. And Anne will tell you that the human body, the human voice is an instrument. The whole body is an instrument. So every voice, your voice, my voice, everybody's voice is a function of the size and shape of your vocal cords and the size and shape of your mouth as you use your voice and of your diaphragm and of how much air you're using and even a function of the entire size and shape of your whole body. Every voice is different. And we get pretty good, though, at recognizing familiar voices like your mom's voice from the other room. But here's the thing. <laughs> We're really, really good. Science tells us this. We're really good at recognizing familiar voices. The voices of those who are closest to us, the ones that mean the most to us, the ones we hear the most often. But we are notoriously bad at picking strange voices out of a crowd with any kind of accuracy. It's what scientists call ear witness testimony, like eyewitness testimony, but trying to identify what you've heard before. 
Matching an unfamiliar voice you heard before by picking that same voice again out of a choice of voices? We are notoriously unreliable and inaccurate at trying to do that. Voice recognition, because of all the complexity that goes into individual voices, voice recognition has been one of the hardest things for artificial intelligence, for technology to crack, although it's getting pretty good now. You can train Siri to only answer your voice when you speak to it on your phone. It frustrates my four-year-old Hudson to no end that he can't speak to Siri on my phone and, and get Siri to respond when he asks, like, how far can dinosaurs swim or what do elephants eat for breakfast or you know, what, you know, the kinds of things he asks Siri these days. So what does Jesus' voice sound like? How do we pick it out of a crowd? Science, scientists would tell us that it helps if Jesus' voice is one we're familiar with. <laughs> one that we listen for a lot. If not, they say we're liable to be easily fooled. So it's easy to think that the creator of the 93 billion light year galaxy space that 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 creator, this great, big, awesome, powerful, all-encompassing, cosmic creator, it's easy to think that that creator would have some great, big, booming voice that strikes us like a bolt of lightning coming right down out of a thundercloud. But one of the most repeated and consistent metaphors for the voice of God in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, over and over again, is that of the shepherd. Close, intimate, quiet, reassuring, calm, guiding, personal, present. When it rains on the sheep, it rains on the shepherd. When the sheep get cold, the shepherd shivers too. It's hot outside, the shepherd gets scorched just like you do. And this most often is the voice of God in Scripture. The voice of the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He guides me beside the still waters. He restores my soul, the voice of the shepherd does. So maybe it's the still small voice inside of us that we ought to be tuning our ears to. The quiet interior guiding voice inside all of us that we ought to be making ourselves familiar with. Rather than all of the booming voices out there that are constantly hitting us over the head. You know, sometimes the loudest voices making the, the boldest claims are shouting in an effort to make the ordinary seem great. To give an elevated status and an heightened importance to and to attract your attention and keep it to whatever kind of claim they're trying to make. When a quiet voice seems to have the opposite effect and in all of the very best ways. A quiet voice has the effect of making the great fit inside the ordinary. Making the big feel natural, comfortable, and familiar. Taking the greatness of God and making it fit inside your ordinary frame. That's the voice of the shepherd. And what does that voice say? Once we've tuned ourselves to the voice of the shepherd, what do we hear? Well, we'll hear love. <clears throat> if it isn't loving, it's not the voice of God. For God so loved the world. Scripture says at the end of 1 Corinthians 13, Paul writes, when everything else is falling away and the world is crumbling around you and nothing else is left, 
and only three things remain, faith, hope, and love, the greatest will be what? Love. This is love, not that we loved God, but that Christ loved us. The world, Jesus says, will know that you are my followers by how you choose to love each other. Love one another as I have loved you. See what great love the Father has bestowed on us. And this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. This is my command. Love each other. If it isn't loving... It's not the voice of God. And you know, you don't just say I love you to anyone. For lots of people in this room, I love you can be an incredibly hard thing to say. Most of us don't just go around saying it to every single person we pass on the street. So when someone looks you in the eye and says sincerely, I love you, it makes an impact. It makes a difference. There's nothing quite like it. You think that wasn't true in Jesus' day? You think God doesn't know that, what it means to say I love you? You think these things are written all over the pages of Scripture lightly? Parents in this room this morning, moms, moms especially, all of you remember, don't you? You spend the first months, the first several years of your child's life saying I love you over and over and over again, a thousand times a day, sometimes a thousand times an hour, I love you. When you pick them up, I love you. When you put them down, I love you. When you wake them up, when you put them to bed, when they run into your arms, when they look up at you and smile, I love you. When they come crying and afraid, I love you. And then one day, after months and years, one day, for the very first time, that child looks back up at you and says, I love you, too. I love you, Mommy. And that little voice, I love you, Daddy. We're experiencing that in our house right now, one kid after the other <laughs> right now. It's the, it's the greatest thing in all the world. That's what this Bible is. That's the voice of the shepherd. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Over and over and over again. Until one day, we look up. We hear the voice. We see the shepherd, and we say, I love you too. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we are your sheep, and we are here this morning to listen for your voice, to make it familiar to our ears to separate it out from all the other voices in the crowd, to hear you say, I love you, and to say, we love you too. Use our loving encounter with you to change us and use us to change the world. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We don't end services at Central without giving you a chance to respond to what God might be doing in your life or in your heart. There's a way you would respond publicly, maybe by choosing today as the day you first ever in your life make a public commitment to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Or maybe by choosing today as the morning when you say, this is the place we want to be as a family. This is the community of faith we want to be a part of as we work together with Central to do God's work in this community. If you make either of those decisions this morning, I'd invite you to make them by coming forward and meeting me at the front of our sanctuary as we sing our departing hymn together. this morning. Would you please be seated? For just a minute, please. First announcement, the Lavinia Baron Book Club meets tomorrow night. It's the last meeting of the year before taking a break for summer, so they will meet at 6.30 at Redneck for dinner and then over here at the church at 7.15 for book club discussion. Be there at 6.30 for dinner or just choose to be over here at 7.15 for discussion and then the book club will take their break for summer. Number two, we've had Two deaths in our extended church family in this last week. Gail Rutherford passed away uh, in the middle of last week. Please remember Gail's family in your prayers, especially her sister, Karen McGarity. And Bill Headley Jr. passed away at the end of last week. Service for Bill will be at his hometown, First Baptist Church, Jessup, Georgia, on Tuesday afternoon at 1 p.m. Please remember the extended Headley family in your prayers as well. Uh, we are preparing uh, first choirs, children, adults, staff members in robes. When this service is over, please stay present. We're going to get you arranged for a picture with Ann, so just sit tight at the end of the service. Also, as we prepare to celebrate Ann's retirement, I want to recognize Mark Mitchell to make a specific announcement about how we can do that. Come on forward, Mark. Thank you. Good morning. As we continue to wrap our heads around the fact that uh, Ann will be retiring soon after a long tenure of service to this church, um, we are making plans to celebrate uh, Ann and the wonderful work that she has done over the years. Um, Ann will be retiring uh, the beginning of August. However, her last Sunday directing the choir will be June 5th. That evening we will have a reception uh, in the fellowship hall to honor Ann and to recognize her for all that she's done in service to this church and in service to the Lord. Um, as a means of thanking her and recognizing her, we want to present her on that evening with a love offering from the membership of the church. So beginning today, uh, we will be begin collecting that offering. I would encourage you to either, uh, you can put a check in the plate next Sunday, you can mail a check to the office, you can drop one by, you can go online and make your donation. However you want to do it, just make sure that your donation is clearly marked uh, for the love offering for Ann Chronic. So uh, please be in prayer for this effort as we move toward 
uh, this date and continue here over the next few few weeks uh, uh, enjoying the wonderful work that Ann does here and uh, working towards celebrating her. So I ask that you please uh, give from your hearts as you consider this. Thank you. In addition to the love offering, let me just remind you that date, June 5th, Pentecost Sunday, Anne's last Sunday of worship leadership here in the morning, uh, and then reception in our fellowship hall beginning at 5 p.m. Put that date on your calendar. Make sure you're here to help us celebrate, and it will not be the same without you. Moms who are in the room, happy Mother's Day. We're very glad that you chose to begin your special day with us here this morning. Uh, I hope all of us who are here this morning lead this hour of worship encouraged and emboldened to be faithful representatives both of our church and of our Lord Jesus Christ. I invite all of you now to stand with me for our benediction. Depart now in peace and as you go, may the God who makes all things holy and whole make you holy and whole. Put you together spirit, soul, and body and keep you fit for the coming of our Master, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.